Okay, today in the garage we've got a, a big project to take care of. We're going to repair this rusty window channel on the Datsun. Okay, as you can see, the uh, really the window channel is basically gone through this side. I've got a little bit on the other side, or the other side's in decent shape, so I can use that to figure out what the contours are for anything missing here. It's just going to be a mirror image. Um, but you can see that, uh, well, there's nothing here. Um, so I think the way I'm going to do this is in three different pieces. We've got the inner piece that's part of this uh, shelf here comes in and creates an inner lip. And then uh, the way it was made at the factories is two pieces because uh, there's that piece and then there was this piece that's bent and formed and then would be uh, spot welded along here. I think I'm gonna actually do this in three pieces. I'm gonna start with this inner part and get that, uh, get that shape. And then I'm going to build just a window channel that goes through here. And then hopefully I can uh, create a, a patch panel to fill in along here. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that works. This is actually something I haven't done before, so uh, I'm learning it along with you. I think I know what I'm doing, but uh, no way to really know until you try it. So uh, let's get working on it. Okay, so we've got a piece of 20 gauge sheet metal um, bent into a right angle. And of course, uh, there's curves to the windshield. So you're saying, or the rear window frame. So I'm sure you're saying, so how do you form this into the right shape? You can't, uh, you can't simply bend it, of course. It's gonna, you know, mangle the piece. And um, well, basically when you shape metal, there's four things you can do. You can cut it, you can weld it, you can shrink it, and you can stretch it. That's pretty much all the, all the uh, operations you can do and everything in uh, sheet metal fabrication is just a combination of those operations. So uh, one thing you could do is you could do uh, a whole bunch of pie cuts in there, bend it over, and then weld all those up, which uh, would take a lot of time and you would have a lot of uh, metal finishing to smooth it out. Or you can, uh, you can shrink the metal. Um, so to do that, uh, what I've got is a shrinker stretcher set. Uh, what these are, it's uh, there's jaws in there, and what the shrinker does is it'll grab on and actually push together. So you do that in little bits, and it pushes the metal together, and that'll cause it to curve this way. If you wanted to curve the other way, you would use the other thing, which is basically the same tool with a different set of jaws. And what it does is it presses down and stretches it apart. So that would cause it to curve the other way. So on this one, I should be able to do it all just with shrinking because all the curves go that direction. Um, I might need to use the stretcher if I overdo it. But uh, so basically what I need to do is take a look at the car, figure out where I want to start with this. So I think I'm going to start on this end. And it goes in the, here. And little by little, we push down. And it should start to, to curve. It's a fairly time-consuming process to get it just right, but here you can see with just a little bit, actually right there you can see it, I've already got a little bit of a bend. So it's just a matter of doing a little bit, going over to the car, seeing how it fits, and uh, eventually it should be a, a perfect fit. Okay, so we've got it uh, bent in just in one plane so far, and right now, the curve in this direction is pretty close to how I want it, but you can see we have a long way to go in this direction. So what I've done is I've stretched it along this edge. Now if I, right in here, if I stretch this flange, that should curve at this direction to match the compound curve of the car. Okay, after just a little bit of shrinking, um, I've got this curve, This the second curve that I did, I've got matched pretty well um, but now that I've got that in place I see that I've actually gone a little too far in in this direction we've got a little bit of, uh, of a gap here and point the camera a little better here you can see I've got a little bit of a gap here but uh, as I said that's easy enough to fix what I need to do is where I've over shrunk it I can come in and I can stretch that out and make that fit in there nicely Okay, I'm pretty happy with that fit. Uh, I think uh, once I get the old piece cut out, 
Uh, that's the trick is cutting it out nice and even uh, and, you know making sure we uh, we cut all the way back to where there's good solid metal to weld to. Um, I should be able to weld this in. I did leave this a little long but uh, my thought was leave it a little bit long and I can come back through with the saw and cut it off to the proper length when it's all finished. Um, so before I do any cut more cutting and welding on the car uh, we've got a couple fuel lines that run through here and then there's the evaporation tank for the fuel tank that's still in here. Um, I don't know if it has a fuel in it, but uh, I really don't want to be that close to it. And uh, in case I do want to reuse it, I don't want to damage it. So I got to pull all that out. Then I got to do some cutting and then we can do some welding. Okay, from inside the car, you can see I've got uh, most of this cut away. A little hard to maneuver inside here. Um, so this last little bit, you can see overlaps another part. And um, I've, I'm guessing if I grind down there, I'll find that that is spot welded. I'd like to keep this piece intact and overlap it with the new piece like it was before. So most of it was pretty easy to cut here. I gotta be a little more careful so I only cut through uh, half the metal. Okay, hopefully this doesn't become a regular theme, but remember last week uh, I banged my head while climbing under the car and uh, blood came gushing out. This time, actually the story is even stupider. Uh, this wasn't even directly related to the car. I, uh, well, first of all, I had a pair of pliers that I set down someplace I can't find them, which frustrated me. Then I remembered I bought some cheap pliers at Harbor Freight the other day that of course came in the stupid clamshell uh, plastic packaging. I cut that and was ripping that open, and in the process of ripping that plastic open, the plastic gashed my hand. Um, so not nearly as bad as last time, but uh, enough that I was bleeding. Uh, I almost turned the camera on just to show you that, that I was bleeding. But uh, I was annoyed, so I went inside, and once again, uh, Jane fixed me up with a Band-Aid, because it's kind of hard to put a Band-Aid on one-handed. So I'm going to get back to work carefully. Uh, I'm getting the, the old bit of metal cut out, and uh, then we can do some welding. Okay, so I've got uh, the car, the rusty metal cut out of the car um, over in this corner. I'm, I'm going to make a patch panel for that separately. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit rusty and we're going to, uh, but we're leaving that in place now so we have something to line it up to. I've got it held in place with some magnets. Now it's sitting on top of the lower flange and flush with the uh, window channel uh, flange around here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach underneath there with the, the Sharpie marker and uh, mark underneath it so we get a, uh, a good cut line underneath it and we should be able to cut it and have a perfect fit. Uh, the trick of course is getting underneath here which I can do in a lot of it. Okay yeah we've got a, a decent line to cut to now. Um, I'm thinking I should be able to cut that on the bandsaw fairly well. Well, I wasn't able to get all of that with the bandsaw. Uh, the problem is, a couple of different problems. Um, going this direction, it got to where, because this is curved this direction, it would hit the bandsaw. Um, I, can, I can cut straight through, but any curving hits the uh, body of the saw. So I turned around and came this direction, because it does curve out, but it still didn't curve out enough that I was able to uh, miss that. So we still have a section in the middle that I haven't been able to reach. Um, I think what I need to do is try to transfer that line from this side to, uh, to here. And then I think, yeah, hopefully I can, uh, you know what? I think I need to just do this the old fashioned way. Let's get the snips. Okay, do it the old fashioned way. Let's get strong. Time consuming, but more accurate in the long run.
Yeah, that gets a little a uh, little hard on the hands, but it's coming along nicely. For a guy who sits at a desk at a computer all the time. <laughs> it uh some of this can be uh using muscles I don't use in my day-to-day -day job. All right, it's a rough cup. Let's see how it fits. I uh, probably have to trim a little bit. I'll have to sand it smooth cuz that uh, leaves kind of a jagged edge uh, from the snips. But, uh, you know, it's just cutting and fitting until it fits nicely and then we can weld. Okay, so after a fair bit of uh, cutting and fitting, trying to make this fit, I'm, uh, I'm not real happy with this. I've got some pretty massive gaps in here. I, this is why I shouldn't do things when I'm hungry for lunch. I thought, ah, I'll get a little bit more done before lunch and I kind of rushed through it. And I really didn't take the time to mark that and cut it. And also, well, I marked it with a Sharpie, which is a really fat line, and I cut on the wrong side of the line. I should have left the entire line, um, and you know, I can always take more metal off. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do, parts of it fit up pretty nicely, and I am MIG welding it. I can uh, I can fill gaps. I'm not sure I can fill that much, but I can I can stick a piece of metal behind it rather than make a whole new piece. Now I may regret that and end up just ripping it out and doing a new piece anyway. But I'm going to try to save this because um, this this is not a part of the car you're going to see inside here. Uh, you know it'll be pretty hard to see back in underneath here. I might even do some upholstery work. I'm not sure how much interior I'm really going to put in this car. But it's not real obvious, and I, I want to make some progress today. So I'm going to go have some lunch so that I don't mess more stuff up. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to weld where we've got, uh, got it fitting up pretty well and try to bend it around, get it fit, uh, fit as nicely as possible. And then I'll, um, I'll show you how you, you can uh, use a MIG welder to fill in gaps. This may be a little more than I can fill, but uh, if, if it's more than I can fill, we'll... Uh, Cut a little piece of metal for the back since I do have you know decent access <laughs> because there's a giant rust hole here I've got easy access behind there to stick another piece of metal but that's after lunch okay well I went in and had some lunch and uh, relaxed for a little bit and actually I'm so I've gotten back to work at this and I'm a little more happy with it than I was earlier uh, I've got some tack welds in in the spots that fit pretty well uh, I still do have some pretty sizable gaps let's see it's kind of hard to tell there let's see if i can zoom in on that yeah you can see there is a pretty good gap that i'm gonna have to fill but all in all i think it's gonna work out pretty well if i uh tack weld as much as i can um just uh with a little bit a little bit of a gap is actually good for meg welding because you get better penetration then um too much of a gap and well you burn out the edges and it just uh you know, it's kind of hard to get it to bridge across so i'll show you how we deal with that once i uh once i get the rest of the little bits that are close enough welded together i gotta climb inside the car i can't really film while i do that too well um, i'll get as much of it welded up as i can and then we'll uh, fill up some gaps okay so how to weld up gaps with a mig welder um, on thin sheet metal it's hard uh, on thick metal you can kind of get away with uh, just adding metal to the edge, uh, edge of it as you uh, weld. But with thinner metal, we're just doing 20 gauge sheet metal here. You try welding to the edge of that, it's just gonna melt away and you'll have nothing left. Uh, so you actually make the gap bigger. So what you need to do is you need to put something behind there to uh, support, basically to support the weld and also uh, to try to get some of the excess heat out. You want to melt you know, the MIG wire and the metal it's touching, but you don't want too much heat or else it'll just melt away. Uh, so what you can do for that is uh, uh, use a piece of copper. So here, this is just a uh, little copper backing plate with a handle. You can stick it in behind there and weld, uh, MIG welding won't stick to the copper at all. So you can hold this up to the uh, flush with the uh, bottom of the metal and you can weld in without it uh, falling all the way through and without it just melting into a pile of mush. Um, this is handy, quick and easy. Um, unfortunately, this is awful big for where I'm going and I, uh, the area that I, I need to put it in there, it's gotta be up there flush. Uh, this won't fit. Um, so actually, haven't had a chance to use this yet. I just got this. This is a uh, little, this part here is magnetic. 
let me get it in here where you can see it a little better. So there's a magnet here and then the little bit of copper. Uh, you can, uh, so this is nice, you can put it on curved surfaces because you can, since uh, this moves about, you get this stuck to it and then this thumb screw will adjust, actually if I hold it this way, it'll adjust how high the angle of, of this part. So stick this up underneath it, adjust the screw so this is flush and then I can, well, I'll have to move this around quite a bit, but the nice thing is it doesn't take an extra hand once you get it in there and we should be able to weld up those gaps. Okay, I'm not sure how well this shows up. Let me hold some paper behind it. But right in here, you see there's where I, uh, I drilled a hole so that I could get the, uh, the little reciprocating saw in there. Uh, so we've got like half that hole showing and a little bit of a gap there. Um, so that's pretty big gap that needs to be filled. So what we should be able to do, stick our little magnetic tool in here. Actually, let me back that off a little bit. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera, but I've got that nice and flush up behind there. Uh, it's sliding around on me a little bit, but I think that's gonna work pretty well. I may have to put a hand on it while I weld it, but I should be able to weld up that gap. Well, it's not real pretty, but I think that should grind down and uh, work out pretty well. As I said, of course, it doesn't stick to the copper and uh, fills in the hole pretty nicely. I've got a couple little spots I need to keep welding on that, but I think that's going to work. Well, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, so you can see I've got it all welded in. It's uh, So with sheet metal like this, you want to just do lots of individual tack welds until they all kind of blend together. I could probably weld between a couple more of those. Um, there's some burning from where things weren't as clean as they should have been, but for the most part, I, I did a better job of cleaning it than I did when I did the trunk last week. So it welded pretty well. It's a little ugly over here. I had some gaps I had to fill in there, but... Um, I think if I uh, sand that down flush, it'll look pretty good. I don't know if it'll be quite seamless, but this is a part of the car that you're not really going to see. Uh, so, not sure if I'm going to... Actually, I think I'm going to hold off on grinding that down. Because now, the next thing I need to do is we need to do the other half of this. Um, see if I can get this to focus here. So there'll be another flange that comes out this way that originally would have been part of this panel. Um, and so rather than doing that all as one panel like it would have been from the factory, I'm gonna do it as two more because with my shrinker stretcher, just doing the same process that I did for that inner piece, I can do the outer piece. And so normally those would have been uh, spot welded together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other piece and we'll uh, get it welded up to that one. And then we should have the basic shape of the window frame. And then um, I'll see about probably next weekend, I'll see about making the panel to fill in the big rusty area. Okay, I didn't show any of this on camera because it's really just the same process as the inner channel um, with the exception of since this, is, uh, since this curves the other direction, this was stretching where I had to shrink it on the other flange a little bit and you'll see that the curve matches the other one quite nicely and um, now normally from the factory these pieces would be spot welded which you know the way spot welding works is basically two electrodes that clamp down and puts high voltage through it uh, to melt the metal um, obviously the typical uh, you know restoration method is you don't have a spot welder so what you do is you uh, drill some holes in it in one panel and then just MIG weld it into each of those holes, which essentially does the same thing as a spot weld. Um, so I'm gonna clean these up a little bit and I'm gonna spray some weldable primer through here, which is a, um, a 
primer you can put between the surfaces to keep uh, keep it from rusting internally. So hopefully in you know another 40 years, the car is not in the same shape it is now. Hopefully it lasts this time. Okay, I actually need more vice grips. Um, so I've got it, uh, a little bit of paint in between there. I don't know if you can tell the, the gray through the holes. Um, and I've got it clamped up and I, I want it to be nice and tight. So I've got them really close here. I'm gonna have to move some of those clamps there just to make sure there's absolutely no gap in between the two pieces as I uh, spot weld or pinch weld them together. Um, so uh, you can see there's a little wave in here, but I should be able to come in after the fact and uh, tweak that uh, and get it shaped exactly how I want. And then of course, I'm gonna have to uh, cut this up. It, it needs to be at the, the height of this um, part of the window channel, but once it's welded, I can come through and uh, cut that off uh, exactly where it needs to be. What I might do, um, I might save that until much later, like wait until I'm almost ready to put the glass in. I can set the glass here, and I can figure out how much gap I really need, because the important thing is, is um, the relative size of the window channel to the glass. Uh, you know, there should be a little bit of gap in there for the rubber, but I can figure out what that gap should be and make sure I get it just right so the, the glass fits back in. So uh, I'm going to start welding and uh, we'll call this small part of the project done. Well, I've got my cold beer, so uh, you know what that means. That means I'm done for the day. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I, there's a lot of work to go still, but uh, like I said, this is not something I've done before. I've seen it done. Um, and you know, there's a big difference between seeing somebody do it and assuming you can do it and actually doing it yourself. Um, so now that you've seen it, hopefully uh, some of you uh, take on tasks like this and don't don't let a, a rusty old car scare you. This this car, you know, many people would have written it off and uh, said it's beyond saving. And, you know, maybe they're right, maybe they're not. But uh, I saw it as a challenge. I saw it as an opportunity to, uh, you know, try out some of these things. And they're neat old cars. And the, these 510s are getting harder and harder to find. So I thought I'd try to save this one. So this piece came out pretty nicely. Um, most importantly, it's solid, uh, which, you know, obviously the, the rusty bits are not solid. I've got a lot more like this I need to do. Th this was the worst part. Um, on the other side, I think I can keep most of the, the inner lip um, if I drill out the spot welds um, and peel out the, uh, the outer piece, I think I can just replace that. So uh, I'll do another episode on that since it'll be similar to this, but some uh, different techniques on, you know, cutting the, um, you know, I'll have to cut the spot welds. Um, then of course, I'm gonna have to uh, fabricate this panel. That's, since it's got some complex curves, that's, that's another thing I haven't done before. Um, it's something that uh, ideally I'd have something like an English wheel to shape it, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do there and, you know, trial and error and figure that out. Um, so, uh, yeah, lots more to do. Um, but right now, uh, my next task actually is I need to clean up the workshop, uh, cause, uh, I've got something big coming, uh, into the garage. I've got a new tool that will, uh, certainly make life in here a lot better. And I'll do an episode on that next week. It was actually supposed to be here, uh, yesterday, Friday was yesterday, um, but it got delayed in shipping. Um, so, uh, supposed to be here Monday. Uh, I'm actually off for the next week so I can, uh, take around with some projects here. So I'll uh, do a video on that. So that one will be interesting for you to watch. Uh, so just uh, a little teaser there to get you excited. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if you're interested, subscribe to the channel. You'll be uh, notified when things, uh, when new videos happen. And, uh, you know, we'll keep working on this. We'll, uh, you know, keep working on uh, general workshop projects. And of course, the I've got some work I need to do on the uh, the old international truck. Mostly I need to do some work on the brakes and the suspension on that. Um, it's decent. It's, it's, it's a little scary to drive right now with the brakes as they are. Um, but uh, the new tool coming into the shop is gonna, gonna help me with that. So we'll just leave it at that. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy my beer and uh, enjoy looking at my lovely welding work.